Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial number 12 of the Lost in the Sea series. In this part 1 we create the bones, the weight paints and learn how to set up the inverse kinematics. In the part 2 we create the rig for facial expressions with shape keys controlled with drivers. And for those who want to model the octopus I left a quick tutorial in the description. So let's begin. I have a bevel modifier and a subdivision and I'm gonna leave them off for now. And normally we want to have our character with no rotation, as straight as possible in a resting pose. So, let's create the first bone, rename the armature to octopus armature and rename the bone to root. Place it under the octopus and in the middle, like this. Enter in edit mode with tab and we extrude our first bone with D and without P disconnect the bone so we can freely move it around while it's still parented to the root bone. Place it in the beginning and in the center of a tentacle just like this. Now, the amount of bones in each tentacle will depend on the amount of flexibility and control you want and the amount of rings you have. As you can see, in my case I have 5 rings, counting with the one in extremity and I'm gonna create exactly 5 bones to control each ring. You can create less or more depending on the flexibility you want, never forget about that. We're gonna place them in the center of our tentacle until we get something similar to this. Now we can duplicate with Shift D these bones, put them in the center of the geometry and repeat this process until every tentacle has bones. In case you want to see the bones in the shade mode, there is a quick way to do that and we can go to the armature, go into this tab and down here select X-Ray and the names. Rename each bone to something you can easily remember. In my case it's tentacle 01 underscore 01, the tentacle 02 underscore 02, the tentacle 03 underscore 01 and so on. So basically the number after the underscore it's the number of the tentacle and the first twos are the number of the bone. You can also change the aspect of the bone in the viewport. You just only need to go to the armor to tab again and in the display section you can switch between octahedral, stick, b bone, envelope and wire. Just in case you don't like this display. After you have created every bone for every tentacle, we create one for the neck and two for the head. In edit mode, let's extrude with E in the Z axis and press Alt P to disconnect the bone and place it around here. Also create the bones for the head and rename them to something like the neck, head 01 and head 02. From this bone we extrude another one, disconnect it with Alt P and place it in this position near this eye and rename it to the right eye. Duplicate it and move it to the other eye and rename it to the left eye. Don't mind about the two bones I got here, we don't need them, we just need one for now. Now select the bones of the eyes and hit P to separate them since it will make things quite easier for the next step. And the next step is going back to object mode and first select the octopus and in last select the octopus armature. Now by pressing Ctrl P we can select automatic weights. Blender will automatically create weights for nearby vertices according to the respective bones. This sometimes doesn't work very well, but fortunately we can edit the weights in the vertex group of the octopus. Now if you are in object mode and press Ctrl Tab to enter in weight paint mode, we can take a closer look and see that Blender created a vertex group for each bone of the armature. And if we select one of them, we can see the weights Blender generate automatically. These, depending on the complexity of your octopus or your character, will need some refining that we will do very soon. Let's first just see if the weights are working. And with the armature selected in object mode, we can press Ctrl Tab to enter in pose mode and we can see now the bones are light blue. This means we can select the bone, move it with G and as you can see it's working. By the way, the pose mode is the mode that will allow us to animate our characters. 
If you have messed around too much and want to reset the position or the rotation, you simply select every bone with A, press Alt G to reset position or Alt R to reset rotation. And then the tentacles will need something called inverse kinematics that will allow us to easily animate our octopus. With the inverse kinematics, we can animate only one bone that will control the rest of the tentacle instead of animating each bone. This is easier than it sounds, so let's go to this tentacle and in edit mode, select the tip we extrude with E like this, press Alt P and select clear parent. Rename this bone to tentacle01 I key controller and not pull like I did. Now in pose mode, and what we need is to select this I key control and then in the last select the bone. Now press Ctrl Shift C and select Inverse Kinematics. Now what do we see? We see a yellow bone and a dotted line. The yellow bone means it has a constraint modifier, which in this case is the Inverse Kinematic, and the dotted line indicates the range of the influence of this bone in the bones that precede them. And if we press this tab with the icon of a bone and a chain, we can see the IQ modifier and we can also see that it has already a target, which is the octopus armature, and the bone that holds the eye key, which is the tentacle 01 eye key controller. Now, in the chain length, we have to count how many bones we want to affect. And if we start moving this value to 2, 3, 4, and 5, we can see the dotted line follows along and shows how far we want this inverse kinematic to take effect. And if we go to pose mode, we can see that now, when we move this bone, the other bones follow along. This will be quite useful, actually. Now, let's do the same for the other tentacles. So, basically the process is, we extrude the bone, then we clear the parent without P, select the bone we extruded, and in last select the closest bone, press Ctrl Shift C and select Inverse Kinematics. In the inverse kinematic constraint, the chain length will be equal to the number of bones you want to affect. And that's it for these tentacles. They are pretty much ready to animate. Just create an inverse kinematics like this for the other tentacles. So that with the octopus selected, now we can refine the weight paint and see how we want the bones to affect the geometry. To enter in the weight paint mode, we only need to be in the object mode and press Ctrl tab. And now in the right we can select the vertex groups, see how each bone is affecting geometry and add more weight or subtract weight. As soon as we are in the weight paint, this left panel shows up and for example, this bone affects too much geometry and we want to remove some of its influence. So let's lower the strength of the brush and switch the brush blend to subtract. You can press this icon so we don't affect the geometry behind and only paint the geometry in the front. And with F we can change the radius of our brush by going from left to right. And now we can start subtracting with left mouse click, like this. And if we want to add weight, we simply switch the blend mode back to add and paint with the left mouse click. And that's how you paint weights, and you can change them if you want. After you have refined your weights, we can proceed to limit the location of those I key controllers, because as you may see, they can move everywhere, and that's not very good. Now, as you can see, I have already limited the location of this bone, and you may notice that as I move him around, the bone only moves in a safe area, which will be quite useful when we are animating. I'm going to remove it and show you how easy it is to set the location constraints. So let's go to this constraint drop down menu and select limit location. The first thing we want to do is set to local space. And now an easy way to find the limits of this bone is to lock every minimum and maximum, set a value like minus 10 in the minimums and 10 in the maximums, like I'm doing. Now, see the arrow in the X, Y and Z axis? That corresponds to the maximum in the limit location constraint. 
So if we push up the Z axis, we discover the maximum value and we can see that then it's too much. So let's push the values of the maximum Z down until we reach a safe area like this. Pushing the Z axis down and we can see that the minimum Z is too much, so let's lower that value. Now to reset the position, we only need to press Alt G and it goes back to its original position. Now let's see how it's behaved in the X axis. The maximum X is too high, let's lower it. And the minimum Z is also too much. Now do the same trick for the Y axis and we are done on limiting the location of these IQ controllers. And we can move the tentacles in a safe area. That was easy, right? Now let's do it for the other tentacles. That's it for the first part. I hope to see you in the second part where we create the rig for the facial expressions with shape keys controlled with drivers. So, see you in the next tutorials. Thanks for watching and subscribe for weekly updates.